Okay, I call the meeting to order the uh, Whaley Select Board meeting of May 30th, 2018. First action item is the approved meeting minutes of May 9th, 2018. Motion. I wasn't here, so. Okay, second. In favor? Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay, moving on. Next item comments from the public. Anybody have comments that's not listed as a hearing or appointment? No? Okay, moving on. Uh, next item is, is uh, public hearings. We have two hearings here uh, this evening. First public hearing is on the transfer of an all alcohol liquor license from Demetrius Conestopoulopoulos. Did you get that right? Okay. Okay. Of uh, Castaway Lounge to Whaley Investment LLC to be exercised on premises of 228 State Road, Whaley. I'm going to read the, the public hearing for Town of Whaley, Mass. Notice hereby given in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 138 of the Massachusetts General Laws and amendments thereto to the Select Board will conduct a public hearing on the application for the transfer of all alcohol license from Demetrius Constantopoulos, okay, DBA Castaway Lounge to Whaley Investments, LLC, to be exercised on the premises at 226 State Road, Whaley, Mass. This hearing will be held on May 30th, 2018 at the town, of, town offices for Sandy Lane, Mass at 7 p.m. Select Board for <coughs> Milosky Chair, Licensing Authority, Town of Whaley, May 18th. Is this the correct public notice that was submitted? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, would the time we'll open it up to the presenters of this to make comments and present what you're proposing here? My name is Attorney Ed Ryan and I'm from South Hadley. I'm here this evening with Demetrius Constantopoulos, uh, who is the current licensee uh, of the premises. Uh, Mr. Constantopoulos has successfully operated this business for the last 45 years. Uh, I and he are getting along in years and he has had some health issues recently and has made a decision together with his wife to uh, sell the business. And so before you this evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Whateley uh, Select Board is the application of uh, the applicant uh, for transfer of the existing Section 12 all alcoholic beverage license uh, situated on that premises. Okay. <clears throat> Do we have any comments from the public? I was going to say my name is Tom Lesser and I represent the people who will be receiving the license receiving, okay. and the principals, Mr. Spagnoli and Mr. Sokol are here okay. and they have experience in the field of restaurants and bars and they presently hold a license in Boston for a restaurant bar that seats 200 people and they don't plan any changes to the property at the present time. And we'd ask that the uh, application to transfer be granted. We've submitted all the materials that were requested by the, your administrative assistant. And, and I want to be clear, we were just talking about the alcohol license at this juncture, right? Right. 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 <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Although obviously the two go together. In terms I, right. Of I, I understand right. that. Yeah. Right. I understand. Do Two owners you represent and any comments, anything you want to add? I'd just like to introduce myself, Julia Sokol um, from Boston, Mass, and uh, I'll be one of the owners with my partner, Nicholas Vagnola, who will be the manager. 
Hi guys, uh, my name is Nick Spagnola. Um, hopefully just looking forward to uh, re-energizing the, the space and, and the real estate and uh, just being here for, for a long time to come. So. Are you guys right in Boston with your establishment or are you outside of Boston? Right in Boston. Can you give us the name of the establishment? Yep, it's a Kingston Grill and Bar. Where is that in Boston? Uh, 35 Kingston Street, we're in the financial district. Okay. So uh, kind of right across from the Federal Reserve. Across from the Federal Reserve, okay. okay. Going across Atlantic Avenue. Exactly, exactly. If you're familiar with the area. Very. Okay. So uh, I knew Atlantic Avenue enough. You know, okay, so you got Atlantic Avenue. Yeah. Uh, you have the Federal Reserve, then you have the Mushroom Building. Yeah. So it's essential. It's about 50 feet from there. We we abut the State Street Building. You know where that is. Yeah. Atlantic. The Good Life Restaurant and Bar. We're across the street from there as well. Okay, so you're you're the owner and you would be the operator. We both be owners and he'd be the manager. Be the manager. Manager. Where yep. would you be located in Boston? Or so um, I'm located in Boston now. I run a, a management and development company, real estate wise. But um, I have plans to move to Waitley. I'm looking for for places now to purchase. Um, would be a bit of a change for me, you know, as far as uh, just what I have going on there. But I'm fully committed to being here and uh, looking forward to hopefully buying the house sometime soon here. Yeah, before the fall for sure. So. I'll be, be moving to Franklin County and then hopefully waiting. So. Okay. Okay. We should open it up to public comments. Brian, do you have anything to add before, just in terms of your knowledge base as opposed to ours? Not at this point. The application, as far as I can tell, is complete. Um, we received the certificate of good standing today. Um, that's a requirement before we submit the paperwork. From DOR or Secretary of State, which one? From DOR. Okay. Uh, from the Secretary of State was not required under this? Correct. Okay. Well, we do have one. Um, so the application seems to be in order. And there have been no citing issues? And I don't mean citing as in geography, I mean issues at the site? Um, not, that I, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Not in my almost two years that I've been here, but couple folks here who might have some. No, I meant in Boston. Was that part of the application that they would have had to? Oh. The, the restaurant that they were in. Um, I mean, if they're, if they're current with the ABCC, then the ABCC is going to do the, okay. the background checks okay. and all those types of things. Great, thank you. <coughs> Sorry for that. Okay, we'll open it for comment. Okay, open up for, for uh, public comment. If anybody has any comments, please. Uh, State your name and uh, yeah. uh, Joe Zwinski, uh, 59 Christian Lane. Um, so, Jonathan, you had mentioned about uh, the alcohol license. Uh, there's also another license. You said obviously they're contingent. Is there going to be another hearing or is there going to be another meeting about that? Is that happening tonight? It's scheduled for 715. I'm, I'm just looking at the agenda, Joe, and I just see this one first and Next one, second. Because, because, because the letter that I received was based on the uh, uh, the alcohol license. I had no other other license oh. that was going to be. So I, I was I was surprised to hear that there's going to be a conversation about something else. <clears throat> I thought they were you were going to receive one letter in the packet. One letter. Okay. I thought both were time. Is that necessary? I mean, letting a butter know. Um, no. My sense is not required. So it was, it was you say what was that? that? A butter notification is not required. But the intent was is that we were sending out the alcohol one, that the other notification was to go in the. <coughs> so, the town, well. so the town actually has to send this out. Or they don't have to send it out. They have to send it out for the alcohol license. But for the entertainment license, I, I don't believe there's any requirement that a public hearing be held. You don't believe her that's a fact? Um, I'm not going to say it's a fact. So any, My understanding, so any votes tonight on this would be potentially would be null and void? If somebody wanted to. You are free to proceed however you like. 
questions. So you're just going to proceed without really knowing? That's not my decision. When I say you, I mean the town. Okay. Well, let me say there, there was a public hearing notice of the entertainment license. It specifically states that the notice is given that a public hearing is going to be conducted on the application of Waitley Investments. Nicholas Spagnoli, manager for an entertainment license, and including a new dancing. This was posted appropriately. And there is absolutely nothing in the entertainment statute which says you give notice to a butters. There is something in, in the alcohol beverage statute, which is why notice is given to a butters with regard to that. But there's nothing in the entertainment statute. All you do is public. All you do for an entertainment license is you do a public hearing notice, which was done in this case. It was done for both yes. applications. Yeah. Well, yeah. And that public hearing notice is basically the posting of our agenda? No, it was in the, in the newspaper. It was published in the newspaper public hearing Correct. notices. Well, it was, it was posted on uh, May 18th. It's the day we had the posting, so. Comments? Chair. Any other comments? Okay. Paul? Yeah, I'm Paul. Moving 148 Conway Road. I'm just curious as to any uh, <coughs> appreciable difference, this establishment versus <coughs> the current establishment in terms of hours, in terms of plans to expand or types of services offered and that kind of thing. Or is it going to be pretty much the same thing, more of the same? Um, good question. I think um, just real estate wise, I think there's some definitely immediate needs on the building that we'd like to take care of. I think the exterior needs a complete facelift. Um, the bathrooms um, we, we'd like to update and uh, hopefully bring up to ADA standards and, and make them handicapped accessible. Um, you mean they're not currently up to standards right now? So. I don't think so. They're still allowed to operate? Um, I think I can leave that for. Um, for the board, but it's it's something that's always been existing, and so I'm pretty sure as long as no changes have been made to the existing structure, then um, it's something that that can stay. But um, I think we we plan to put serious capital into the facility, and uh, for now, I think we'd like to see how the the existing business operates, and then maybe see if there's demand at some point in the future for maybe some good pub food down the road. You know, um, I think we'd like to keep the same hours of operation. Understand on Sundays there, there's no nudity, um, so. I think overall, I'd like to try to make it a place too where people can come and watch a, a Patriots game or a Red Sox game, and, and hopefully down down the line get uh, maybe some good pub food at some point. But for now, I think exterior um, definitely needs facelift, and then bathrooms are, are going to be a main concern. For now. So, I don't believe it's open at all on Sundays or Mondays currently. Is that accurate? That's correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So. To make that change in the, the, the application. I think the application says 2 a.m. says, well, let me read the application. It says 8 a.m. to, to 1 a.m. Wednesdays, no, including Saturdays and Sundays. Nope. From 12 or 1 p.m. to 1 a.m. Monday. So is that the liquor license? Yes. Okay. So that's. Just deal that's, with the liquor license right. right now. The license allows it. I just don't, I can <coughs> choose not to. Saturday, oh, Saturday right. evening into Sunday morning. That's Monday. Well, yeah. Sunday morning meeting, Saturday night. I mean, it's it's closed. You know, when they close, having been open on Saturday, Saturday it's Monday. Sunday morning, and you know, and then they don't open again Sunday, until right. Tuesday. Right. But the license allows for seven days a week. I assume. Is that accurate? Yes. Yes. And it's just up to the owner to decide what. He or she can. He should say right in the front. Eight a.m. to one p.m. weekdays, including Saturdays and Sundays, from twelve oh one to one a.m. Right. It, it just needs to. It cannot open on Sundays before noon. 
that's what the place and they can't serve alcohol before noon on Sundays. That's the restriction. Yep. So this transfer, there's no there's no new nothing new that can be added to this. I mean we're talking about let's not fool ourselves about what this establishment is. So we're talking about potentially running it on a Sunday? Yeah, no, 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 no new dancing on. Well, so you gotta run it as a bar? He has the right right now, you're telling they, me. They have the right. So right are you gonna allow right that to now. continue to happen? They have the right right now. I, yeah, I, I, I'm just asking, is it gonna transfer that way? It doesn't have to, I mean, we could put. And that's what I'm asking. Right. I think, and Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, and trust me, this is far from my area of expertise. But my educated guess here is that I don't believe the town can prevent the transfer. I think the town can put on certain stipulations to address any concerns within reason that residents have um, on its operation. But Joe, I didn't go to many law school classes. In fact, I went to zero. So I, I but that's what my homework has told me. I, I didn't go to any either. You're right. So, I, so I'm, I'm just, asking, I'm just. I'm asking a question because right. we have new owners that aren't local people are going to come in and they're going to try to start making back some money on this thing. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we've got this place open seven days a week. And we said, well, we transferred the license. It says on a license you can operate that way. And I think it's within our purview to Thank you. limit. Thanks. The license. I do not think it's in our purview to eliminate the license. So now it's 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 not open on Mondays at all. We know that. And Sundays is it open Sundays at all? No. Right no. Now? It's not open Sundays either. Other than late Saturday evening, but Sunday during the day. And the application for the entertainment license, just so there's no confusion, is not requesting that there be any entertainment on Sundays. The re application for the license is Monday through Saturday. As Mr. Spagnola said, on Sundays it might be open for a Patriots game or something like that as a sports bar. But not entertainment. But no entertainment. There is no new entertainment. We're not talking about Sunday. entertainment right now, correct? Right. We'll we'll get, we'll get that. That. Well, I just wanted to clarify that because <coughs> there seemed to be some confusion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Paul? Paul Antio, 50 Weber Road. Um, <coughs> I understand no one sitting up there has or is an attorney. Um, I, I just wonder why we don't have town council sitting right there. But everybody else in here who's showing up has got a council. And I, I think this meeting should be put off until you guys can bring your town council to sit right there to represent the town. Brian, as an attorney, you don't feel comfortable. It's not my position to. It's provided legal advice. Um, there's nothing that yeah. would, would prevent us from continuing a public hearing if the, if the board so chose. Mm -hmm. um, but. And we also don't have to decide tonight. Correct. We have 30 days. Uh, to decide, and I don't know if that's from the start of a hearing or from the end of a hearing, if it's continued. It's from the filing of the applications. It's from the filing of the application. Yep. Which was essentially today because you I just would, got that. I would say the complete application was received today. Okay. Then, then I'm going to suggest, and this is not a reflection on support or non support of this, that. A, it, it does trouble me that although not required, I think notice should be sent to a butters just because that's the way we do business in Whiteley. Um, and for for the entertainment license that it would be yep. discussed. That's the next year. I, I, I get it, but it seems like it's 715 and, and well, we're. Let's, let's focus on this on this one. Anybody else got comments, Paul? You know, one more comment that just occurred to me. I'm on the uh, Complete Streets Committee and one of the most uh, one of the most uh, problematic intersections in the county is Christian Road and State Road, and I would be concerned if these guys are successful and drum up more business, which I assume they want to do, 
that that's going to contribute to uh, traffic poten potential traffic problems, especially with with uh, customers who might be drinking and then driving, which is to be expected with a bar, and you know that's that's fine with the <coughs> limits, but. I think already we've got a problem there, and I would just alert the town to the need to do something about that <coughs> intersection, especially if something like this is going to happen. So it's just a, a red flag. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I'm aware that that is uh, so the number one accident location in all of Franklin County. Right. Uh, and FERCOG has been notified, and I guess eventually Mass uh, DOT about it. So. Uh, that's something that will be looked at in the future. And yeah, I, I guess have some concern about uh, the parking and the view and, and obstructions at that intersection. So uh, yeah, that is, a, that is a concern. And I think we, we, will, we will be hearing more about that in the near future. Uh, whether we place a restriction on, or some condition on this license or the, or the next one, I, I guess is yet to be determined. But I think that's improving that intersection is, I and mean, if if the current owner had had decided to invest a sizable amount of money into marketing and and, and, and to increase his his and her business, that would be something that we need to deal with anyway. I don't. I'm not sure that the transfer. Is should be the trigger mechanism alone to deal with that. That should be dealt with regardless. But that shouldn't be triggering it because anybody, current or new owner, can 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 put their business school hat on and, and, and increase business if if that's what they want to do. Um, can I ask a question of any? Just looking at the liquor license. Let's assume for a second that the entertainment license wasn't a part of this. Would anyone have an issue with, and maybe everyone would, I don't know, would, everyone, would anyone have an issue with just the transfer of the liquor license from one owner to the next? And may I ask why? For, the, for one specific reason is the noise that goes along with that, okay. and that what has been granted in the past was a smoking lounge, which is turn basically my backyard into an unusable, I mean, we're, we're used to the foul language that comes out of it, out of there, but basically we can't sit out on our patio and have guests over there because of the foul language that comes out of there. You know, and I'm not talking about the motorcycles that come ripping out of there at midnight on a Saturday night or, or anything else. So, so yeah, there is, a, there is a definite impact. And so I'm assuming that being run as a bar they would still have a smoking lounge that right now there is still people bringing beer bottles and everything else onto. So I think that goes against what was the agreement of the, having that lounge out there and it's starting to spread outside. So yes, I do, have, I do have an issue with it. Anybody that doesn't think that that's happening has their head in the sand. Okay, so under the present operating Correct. Functionality. Because I have no idea, you know, okay. I mean, we're not talking about the entertainment yeah. aspect of this. Okay. okay. So I, I just want to say that I support what John said just, earlier about, I'm okay. sorry, I'm Sheila Zawinski, 59 Christian Lane, okay. the direct of honor. Okay. Yeah. Okay, please yeah, yeah. So, please so I want to support what John said earlier about, you know, kind of the expectation of Waley is that we're neighborly. So I, I have made calls personally over there. I haven't called the police. I've tried to handle it directly. I have called over there and told people that I want to speak with the manager and that if the manager can handle it, then we won't have to go further. So I just want that to be on record. That's happened on multiple occasions where I've had to tell them we have kids in the house. I don't want to listen to it. Go out there and tell them to turn it down, or you know we're going to have a bigger problem. So that's one thing. The second thing is about the days of operation. They don't operate on Sunday and Monday. We love having that respite from it, and I would not want to see that extended to seven days. I find it kind of ironic that at town meeting this year, we had kind of a contentious conversation about offering a pouring license to a place that's open two days a week, limited number of hours, 
selling a local product, supporting local agriculture, and building on the community. And we're offering now to extend a liquor license to a place seven days a week. I don't know what the current is and how this would be different, what their expectation is. We certainly don't want to turn away you know, ownership that wants to develop Waitley, but I'm saying we have to stick with, as you pointed out, what is our identity as Waitley? Who are we as a community? We have control over what we bring in, let in, and how we treat you know, the people that are here already. Can I so, clarification? We're not offering this license to them. They're applying. Okay, so that, that's just just to make that really clear. The transfer, right. right? They're applying for a transfer. We're not offering a transfer, <coughs> right? It's yeah. their action. <coughs> More comments, Jim, or person next to no. Okay, um, go ahead. If I could, my name is Nick Sheila. Yes. And then Joe. Yes. So Director Butters, both of you. Yes. Um, I just I think you'll be pleasantly surprised to see how responsive we are and, and how we communicate. My cell phone's always on, my email's always on, I pick up the phone 24 hours a day, you know, seven days a week. So, um, working with you on concerns that, that really affect your property and, and are kind of causing you inconvenience. Very sincere about addressing that with you and coming up with a solution. I'm not here just to open up and forget about the abutters and things that you guys may be going through right now. So, just here looking to make a substantial investment in this property, in the town, um, and, and just work with you and communicate, and that's all we can do. Just want to be a good operator. Maybe different than what you're you're used to experiencing, but I pick up the phone all day long. I talk to people all day long. I answer emails all day long. So communicating with people that, that have a genuine grievance, um, I think we look forward to it sincerely. We we really do want to put some money in this place, and I think we'll see a change of crowd, different vibe, and you know. And so no offense, but we heard the same thing from the people who own the solar thing, and and it changed after that. Got it. Yeah. So they pick up the phone anymore. They, you know, I will. So. You know, call me tomorrow, call me tonight, call me anytime. So. Okay. Uh, back there, please. Mm -hmm. Rebecca Jones, um, 185 Chestnut Plain. As a woman, I would love to not have a strip of waiting. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll out. Yeah. Any other comments? Uh, I mean, it's okay. We'll close, close the, we're going to close the oh, hold on, hold on. public hold on, hold on. comment hearing. What do you guys want to do? Do you want, to, do you want to continue the public hearing? To a, do you want to do the public hearing, or do you want to close the public hearing? I'm okay um, with continuing it. I feel like there's a lot of questions still kind of out there among people, uh, and it's and it might be technically on a different license, but it is related to the yeah. to the other. So I'd be more comfortable with continuing the hearing. With, with council present at the next one because of the connection between the two because I can't imagine you guys are interested in the liquor license without the entertainment license. I just, I call them crazy, but. Yeah, you're right. they are connected, they're intertwined. Absolutely. Yeah. It's not yeah. gonna be one without the other. Right. Yeah. We can't yeah. buy it and it will continue as it is. The liquor license right now is a seven day a week liquor license. Right. So the operators just choose you not to operate on Sundays and Mondays. Right. Could operate on Sundays and Mondays under the liquor license. It's a seven day a week license. I've never heard of anything other than that in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Right. Yeah, yeah. And I'll just speak for myself that, that I would like to continue it. Um, I, I honestly do see room for discussion about how we can work with the neighbors and the abutters, specifically the abutters, but I, I also want to, you know be understanding of, of, of other concerns as well um, but I think with council here we'll be more informed I, I move, uh, move then that we continue the hearing at our next meeting or whatever meeting we can get our council at it'll be it'll I think it'll work much better for for everybody in, involved um, especially because yeah. of the of right. the connection with entertainment yeah it just had a second then second so, so so I would recommend you continue it to a, uh, uh, a place certain, a date certain, and a time certain. Okay. I just put our uh, other meetings in the calendar. But I want to I want to make sure that before that happens, <coughs> that at least one of us with you has had significant conversations with council so that we can anticipate all issues that will be addressed. It'll be very helpful for us to have specific questions. 
Okay. Um, and, and so I would, I would love for, and I'll, and I'll look at, at, at Joe and Sheila. Um, you guys know how to communicate with me. If you have specific questions that you would like us to ask council as we prepare for the next data of a continuing hearing, I would welcome that. I would encourage that. Cool. Let's have let's have contact myself. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. I just was trying to make it easy for him, but that's fine. Yeah. Well, we have um, meetings scheduled for the 13th and the 27th. Both of those fall within the 30 days of the application date. I think to respect the, the, the timing of the people who are looking to make an investment, we should do this as quickly as possible. Yeah, we don't know that we can get true. No, but if we can, we should try, we should do that. Okay. So is it the 13th or? 13th will be fine. 27th will continue the oh, what, public hearing. Of June. We got to pick one. You got to pick oh, one. 13th. Let's go to 13th. At what time? 6 p.m. At what location? Right here. Town offices. Right here. Town offices. Yeah. yeah. Somebody want to make that motion? Uh, I move that we continue the hearing uh, with a date certain, June 13th, a time certain, 6 p.m. Location certain, right here. 6 p.m. Yes. 6 we normally meet at 6 p.m. instead of 7. This week was special on John's request to meet at 7 instead. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so do we... That's a motion. I need a second. Can, I, can, I, can a girl have a second here? I'll second. Thank you. Vote on. So we can move on. Vote on. Vote. We need to vote. Aye. All in favor. All in favor. You have to say all in favor. All, all in favor of the motion. <laughs> Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? No. And the town elections don't impact our next meeting at all, correct? Town elections are June 12, right? Yeah. 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 I don't know. You never know, but. Okay. Yeah. So we, can, we can move on, Brian. Yeah. Okay. 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 The next hearing. The next. Uh, well, I, I, we have to take up the 715. 715, 715, yes. yes. We didn't, we didn't yes, that's, that that's right. the next item. No, yeah. exciting, uh, I'll throw out there that I'm, I'm wondering whether, because they are connected, whether we should continue well, let's that. Open, let's open the hearing first. So okay. we should open the hearing. And yeah. Okay. Uh, the next public hearing is, read the notice, public hearing town of Waitley, Massachusetts. The Waitley Select Board acting as a licensing authority for the town of Waitley will conduct a public hearing on the application of Whaley Investments, LLC, Nicholas Spagnola, manager for an entertainment license, including new dancing. This establishment is located at 226 State Road, Whaley, Mass. Said hearing will be held on Wednesday, May 30th, 2018, at 7 p.m. at the town offices, 4 Sandy Lane, Whaley, Mass. Select board. Fred Orlowski Chair, Licensing Authority, Town of Whiteley. Issued, uh, published on May 18th. Okay, do the presenters wish to? Sure, the application was filed under General Laws Chapter 140, Section 183A. And that section states that the licensing authorities shall grant a license under that section unless they find that the act license taken alone or with other license activities would adversely affect the public health safety and order that it couldn't be conducted in a manner that wouldn't would conduct wouldn't affect the public safety <coughs> health or order and more specifically that that the Public show cannot be conducted in a manner so as to protect employees, patrons, and publics inside or outside from disruptive activity, from criminal activity, or from health, safety, or fire hazards. Prevent an unreasonable increase in the level of noise, or prevent an unreasonable increase in the level of pedestrian or vehicular traffic. 
Can you say what you're reading from? General Laws, Chapter 140, Section 183A. Page 12. Okay. 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 Exactly. Okay. Right now, there are no plans to conduct it as other than as it's been conducted. So there's going to be no unreasonable increase in the level of noise. In fact, I think we're going to present evidence that there'll be less noise than there is presently. There's going to be no unreasonable increase in the level of vehicular traffic. It's going to be exactly the same as it was before. There are no attentions of doing anything other than at the outside and the bathrooms at this point inside in, in time. And the statute says that you shall grant a license. And the Supreme Court has been, supreme, has been clear, the United States Supreme Court, the Massachusetts Supreme Court, you can't deny it. It's First Amendment protected. And um, we plan to conduct it in a way that's not going to impact people. And you can put restrictions, reasonable restrictions on, on signage, you can put reasonable restrictions on the activity itself. But you can't deny the activity. We're open to any questions, but we, it's been there for over 40 years. And somehow it seems like people have lately have been able to coexist with it. Perhaps the next door neighbors have, have issues and we're going to try to address them and talk to them about addressing those issues. But we're not increasing anything. And that's what that statute talks about. An increase in noise, an increase in traffic. Okay, so the, the, uh, the owner would be the new owner, just like for the alcohol license, if a manager you would manage seeing this operation as well as the alcohol portion Correct. of it. Correct, yes. Correct. Questions. Okay, anybody have questions? Back there. Is it Paul or? Paul. Or, Maybe. Yes. Yeah. Um, I had a question about the entertainment. Um, I take it the entertainment consists mostly of women dancing or something. I'm not exactly sure. I want to make, my concern is that if this goes through that the employees um, are protected and treated fairly. Um, and sometimes in activities like this, there can be a tendency for things to get a little shadowy. And I want to make sure, I want to be assured as a resident that uh, the people involved in the entertainment are well treated, not abused in any way. And, um, you know, taken care of as they should be, should this pass. Uh, uh, my name is Nick Speckle. <clears throat> I've conducted a um, number of interviews with uh, the car management staff that's there now, um, the 15 or so um, women that are working there now. Um, all believe that there's tremendous upside potential. All believe that uh, um, the establishment is underperforming. They all believe they, they could be doing more and, and earning more. And I think overall, um, I think inside, if you, if you talk to people there, there's a general level of positivity and excitement about new owners coming in, coming in and investing money and making a substantial capital investment. And I think um, it's just clear that the current staff there is, is ready for a change and, and they firmly believe there's upside. So I think uh, the current staff is, is more than happy to let someone else come in and, and, and just renovate the place and clean it up. So, okay. just to answer maybe your question, Paul. I guess the <coughs> application does not specify male or female. It just says entertainers in general. So I guess it could be either one. Sheila. Hi. So Sheila Zawinski, 59 Christian Lane. So what I heard was that. Uh, they cannot have an unreasonable increase. So that's not firmly defined in my mind. But right now, I understand also from what I've been told tonight, and I would love to have our legal counsel here to be able to explain that, that if the license currently exists for seven days, but they're not operating seven days, 
If the new owners are operating seven days, that's a 25% increase. So to me, that's significant. I don't know if I would call it unreasonable, but it's significant. So somebody who's going to be putting money into a place is going to expect a return, obviously, right? People aren't in business to, to be kind people, they're in business to make money. So my, my feeling, listening to everything that's being presented tonight, is that they are going to want to utilize that full, and that would just, that would then lead to an unreasonable increase in noise, traffic, all the issues that we've talked about previously. Yeah. So safety for that reason, I would safety. I would say that that would not allow it to get moved forward. It would pro prohibit or cause us to think again and utilize proper legal counsel prior to allowing that to. I don't think it's a done deal. I don't think it's a given, as has been presented. Okay. Paul? Yeah, just um, Paul Antia, 50 Weber Road. Um, just a question. Do the prospective buyers have a background in new entertainment and that kind of a business? No. No hospitality yeah, early on. Um, I think there's only 30 or so entertainment licenses in the state, um, maybe 25 or so are operational. So I think uh, we're definitely both entrepreneurs. We see an opportunity of, uh, so that's, that's pretty much it. Um, but hospitality, yes. I think we can make it work, and everyone hopefully will see how responsive we are. And my number is available, my email is available. I hope to talk more about concerns that are going on. Maybe there's some stuff going on that we don't know that we can address and, and work with you guys on. So, uh, really hope to be here for a long time. And uh, I've spoken to a number of people too over a number of years, and uh, I've actually known Jim for for five years or so, and have had conversations going back that far with people in town. Um, I think overall there's a general sense that some, most people would like to see cleaned up, new exterior, new roof, some improved parking. I just think overall the improvements we want to make will be good for property values. They're, they're not going to hurt you. You know, we'll do some nice siding on there, and, and that alone should should help change everything, change the vibe that's there now. And um, yeah, it, we do need to make some hopefully changes to the bathroom, to clean it up. So, but. okay, thank you. Any other comments? <clears throat> Fred Barron, 120 North Street. Just, I'd like to ask the board to ask counsel when they talk to him if there is a any case law on the subject that is relevant to this. That it would be a municipality denying a license to a a transfer from an existing business to someone who is going to retain the same licenses. Whether there's any case law that there's been a denial and that that's been upheld, and whether, if a denial is issued, there is a chance of significant litigation costs to the town having to defend such a suit. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have comments? Susan Barron, 120 North Street. I would like to ask um, the proposed purchasers <coughs> The operation that you have in Boston that you said does not have this sort of entertainment and in fact during the meeting I went online and I just looked it up and it looked like it's a bar and grill and before it was said that the two licenses are linked, the liquor license and the entertainment license. And I have to ask the question, why would you not consider bringing to this, you know, purchasing this spot and using it for a place very similar to what you've been successful with doing in Boston, uh, which is something this community could use of a nice, you know, family-friendly bar and grill type of environment where people can go and get good food. I think ultimately we'd like to find a, a perfect balance, um, truthfully, to that, that perfect environment where someone can come and watch a game and maybe further down the line enjoy some good pub food. Um, I think for us there is an opportunity, as I mentioned, that the number of licenses available for this industry are very tiny, they're very small, there's maybe 30 or so, um, even less are, are, are full liquor and full nude, so from a, a business opportunity standpoint, I, I think we see upside in that. Um, I, I do think we can we can make it work. Um, it would be different than, than it is now, I mean, we, we have a standard, if you see the, the, the bar there, I mean, it's pretty clean operation, it does a decent amount of business, so just think there was a, it's a good business opportunity. 
Okay. Thank you. Well, yeah, just one more question. Is there any requirement that the entertainers be uh, U.S. citizens and over 21 years old? Good question. My guess is it's 18 and not 21. That is my guess. They can't drink if they're not 21. But right. They can entertain. Right. Correct. Um, that's true. I wanted to comment on something that Paul had said earlier. Because you guys don't have experience managing an establishment with nude entertainment, and I think we can all agree that that's a different type of management responsibility because of the potential for really taking advantage of people who um, who are feeling pressure as employees or, or what have you. And, and it's a really valid point that he makes. How do we as a, as a town, as a select board, <coughs> gain confidence that your skill set in managing a traditional restaurant, grill, bar, whatever you want to call it, can those skills can transfer to something that really is different and has the potential for a tremendous amount of abuse? How, how do we? I know it's not necessarily tied to the license and the granting of the license, but that valid question, no doubt. Um, I've been running businesses, I'm 37, I've been running businesses since I got out of college when I was 23. I'm a lawyer, um, I built a real estate company with one building, I have over 100 now. I manage 20 different people. There's no question that's not a new business, okay? It's hard to, in Massachusetts, to get into this industry without buying your first one. From a problem standpoint, what I say to everyone here is, objectively speaking, I would think it would be good for two guys like us who have experience, we're clean, our backgrounds are clean, we've never had any issues criminally or anything like that, to go into a business and try to bring in that direction versus existing operators who may know loopholes, who may know who may come from a different angle. I don't think that's necessarily the best bet for an existing business like this. I'm not gonna argue we have no experience in it. I've run probably a dozen different companies. I've never had an issue. Everyone here can Google me and nothing bad will come up. I can put my stamp on that. I'm in real estate, so I do zoning, so there's gonna be issues of zoning issues, but <coughs> there's no complaint in a world of Google. You can put both of our names in and no one's gonna speak ill of us personally. It's not going to happen. It's I, I understand where you're coming from, but I just think <clears throat> bringing clean businessmen with good backgrounds in to kind of wrangle this business, I don't see that as a bad thing. Okay. Yes. Neil Abram, 184 Chestnut Plain Road. I think we've heard two different descriptions of uh, business change. Uh, one is a change in the number of days of operation. The other is an interest in more customers, more business uh, from an improved facility. And I wonder if there is a measure of what is significant. One can do the math on the number of days. Uh, is there a business plan that says we expect to have 25% more customers? Uh, on the days that are already operated, uh, and we expect to have more days and more customers. Uh, how does one measure the total impact against the reasonableness standard of, is this a significant or deleterious change? And wouldn't it be wise to have a business plan from the new owners who say we intend to operate this many days and to improve the facility to draw the same more customers uh, else the decision is to approve in advance without knowing when the limit is reached of what has been a reasonable uh, increase and when it becomes an unreasonable increase <coughs> Thing I would say that this is a renewable every every year, one year license, Correct. right? So if things change, uh, get out of hand during that one year, 
there's no requirement we renew it the second second year so it's a long year all right okay sorry did you i was just going to say it's not per se that it's an unreasonable increase it's that the business cannot be conducted <laughs> under any certain set of circumstances and so that it results in an unreasonable increase we're not we're, what we're talking about here is one day a week more in terms of entertainment that has been conducted recently but that's not to say that the owners couldn't go back if we don't buy it to six days a week nothing prevents them from doing that their entertainment license allows them to do that <clears throat> they've just chosen to shut down for various personal reasons one day a week two two but, but more, we're still going to be shut down <coughs> on sundays it's one versus two. It's five days versus six days. And, and for a little background, in the bar and restaurant business, it's difficult to have days where you're not open in terms of getting customers. I think everyone in this room can agree, Monday in any business is really a slow day. It's just the di difference of actually being open. I don't think it's, Monday is not comparable to a Thursday, a Friday, or a Saturday, revenue-wise. It's just not really in any business. Uh, at least that depends on nightlife and people coming there on their free time. So to us, it's more about just the ability to be open, not necessarily about making money. Those, in fact, those days will probably be losses. <coughs> That's probably why they're not open now. <coughs> Jim, what was the year you stopped opening on Mondays? Do you remember? When did you stop opening? I don't know, Mr. Edwards. It's been a long time. Probably back in the eighties. I would assume they could guess back in the 80s and all this time up today we have no trouble at all whatsoever. Okay. Thank you, sir. Can you come right here? Sean Allen, Laurel Mountain Road. Uh, considering the potential uh, expansion, improving the business, uh, their guidelines clearly stated Massachusetts law, local zoning, fire marshal requirements. We should be able to determine based on lot size, buildable, expandable footprint of buildings and parking spaces required accordingly, occupancy. Can, can the town provide what the potential for that location would be for a bigger business? An expanded business and increased traffic and you know customer occupancy. Or the Board of Health may know, uh, depending on, on what's uh, the uh, septic system, whatever can handle. I guess could be a could be an issue. I, I don't know. Right, but also it's, it's, it's what does fire code allow for, fire for code occupancy, occupancy. Um, how many parking spaces are on the current lot? I mean, those are, I, I certainly don't know. Yeah. I don't know, I, is there a kitchen in there already? I mean, I don't know what the inside looks like, so I, there's not a kitchen in there right now. So, but let me ask you this, and, and I, I don't want to get too far afield because I think we're going to need counsel here, but would that require you guys to expand that footprint to put a kitchen in there I mean because that's going to be potentially seen as an improvement that and again I don't remember the language but no, there's, a, there's a space there is a space there where they have it's not a full kitchen per se but there is a kitchen area okay right yeah. 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 so you need a building permit a a model. A model. the question is to what extent do you take the food and that's a future discussion Right. Okay. I just was yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I just want to say, I just want to say one thing about traffic, because I understand it's a busy intersection, but I've been involved in any number of clubs like this that have done traffic studies, and the peak time for traffic at that location at that intersection is going. You're going to find you from 7:30 to 9:30 in the morning and from 4.30 to 6.30 at night. And that is not when peak traffic 
is going to be at this club. So traffic is really not going to be an issue. Any traffic engineer would tell you that. It's going to be way below, hundreds of cars below per hour Why don't you ask you during those that? peak times. Yeah, I, I guess I, I kind of agree with you because the, this information that FERCOG has provided on accidents that are there, the current during the daytime, dry weather conditions. It's when the majority of them occur. Now, yeah, there are shifts when Yankee Candle gets out that maybe get the majority of the traffic, but most of them are during the daytime. Yeah, there is some evening shifts, but I don't know the, the difference in capacity in those shifts, but, okay, Joe? I think you both are just making an uneducated statement um, based on, you know, what your past experiences have, have been. And that's what this gentleman has done all evening, is that he's just saying that this is what it is. So I don't believe it. I'm the butter. Who's the first person to call 911 when there's an accident there, okay? Right, we're the ones that are there. So don't tell me when the accidents are happening, okay? Maybe potentially when they could be happening, but don't tell me that until you start putting that information in front of me, okay? I think it's, it's, it's not a fair statement to just stand up here and make a <coughs> blank generalization as to what this is when it is. That's just, that's, you're, you're acting like it's gospel. And that is not true. You know, show me some documentation that that is the case, and then maybe I'll listen to you. Okay. Anybody else? Comment? Uh, one, one thing I, I noticed the difference <coughs> the existing license has hours of operation from 12 noon to 1 a.m., and you're proposing from noon to 2 a.m.? Is, <coughs> is that correct? That was what the proposal is. Right. I, I guess we. I guess my concern is that the liquor license would only go till till one a till one a.m. They're not well. Anyway. The liquor license is to one a.m., but the entertainment license is to two a.m. Is what you're proposing, right? So how are you well, going to control from one a.m. to two a.m. Liquor. The liquor has to stop being oh. served. Okay. Yeah. Because all our current licenses end up at 1, 1 a.m. for liquor. It's sort of. Why, why are you going the extra hour to 2 a.m.? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Air Camelot also has things like <coughs> music and TVs on there, right? So there, there is a portion of it where it's not, we're not just talking about the new dance. I don't have it in front of me. Well, yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't say what. It doesn't say what would go to. Yeah. Recording music, light show, dancing, DJ, and that goes from noon to one. To two. Well, I'm existing. We're looking at. Okay, but the, 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 the again, but the common victor is, yeah. is, is one. one. That's correct. And because the same, the same detail is, is in that application as well in terms of light shows, theatrical exhibition, exhibitions, et cetera. Correct. Um, okay. I'm, I, I'm, Mr. Chair, I'm going to make a motion that we, we continue this to the same date and half hour post time. So let's, yeah. let's be very specific. Right. So if, if, if we're at 6. We'll do 6.30 on the 13th. I think we're going to get through in half an hour. I don't. No. We, we didn't start at 7.15 for this one either, didn't we? We canceled the period for it. Well, we took a little well, we took But we should probably schedule more than 15 minutes for yes. each of them. <coughs> Whatever your pleasure is. Yeah. If we do at 6.30. Yeah. That would be enough time. The first one was at 6. We'll continue with this on the 13th it's at 6.30. That's your motion? Well, is it safe to assume that you can't have hearings simultaneous? Because they are connected. I mean, let's not. Yeah. yeah. And it's hard to have a conversation about liquor without the entertainment and, and the reverse. I 
would suggest that we just do them separately because we don't know. Okay, and just allow overlap. Yeah, there's in nothing wrong with doing it individually. Okay. Okay. Then my motion would be to continue until uh, June 13th, 6 o'clock for liquor and 6.30 for entertainment. Yeah, is it okay for me to ask you um, one question? Sure. It's been sort of rattling around in the back of my head. It was something that Mr. Um, Spagnola said earlier, um, that you plan to move uh, here to Waitley. And I guess my question is <laughs> why? Why Waitley? Why do you want to move from Boston yeah. To Waitley. I, I see opportunity in this town. Um, I, I do think Castaways is a great opportunity. Um, I see some other opportunity in this town as well. And, what other opportunity? Um, I am conducting research right now on other businesses that, that are in town. There's been some zoning bylaws that have changed recently. And uh, so just, I think which business wise. Show, that, which bylaws are you thinking about? I think there was an annual zoning change right now at the at the past. There were, there were two. Meeting. There were two of them. Which one yeah. are you? Um, can defer, but I have an interest in town. I have an interest in doing business here, and uh, I kind of need a, a different lifestyle pace, anyways. <laughs> I, I want to buy things down. I just want to come up, maybe get some land, and and. There's any number of towns you could do that. Why wait? I plan on owning a business here that, that's going to require pretty much all of my time to get it going off the ground. We're going to make a substantial capital investment that's going to need all of my time to oversee. So it's because it, of the potential of one of 20 handful of entertainment licenses is the reason. It's, the it's beautiful. The is beautiful. I, 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 I don't. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm trying to. I'm just trying to, to narrow <clears> down. <throat> when he says the opportunity that Castaways presents. That seems to be like the primary, the primary thing. You want to move here to be here so you can do a good job at it. I, I understand that, but the thing sure, that, the of, thing that separates Waitley out of any other of the you know 20, 30, 40, 50 beautiful towns in, in the state of Massachusetts is that particular opportunity. I'm a believer in just working where you live. You know, it's no, no, that I've done, I understand. Done well with you know for for a good part of my, part of my life. So I'm a believer in working where you live. And I do want to be a member of this community, and I do want to be held accountable to, to Joe and Sheila and, and other about So, uh, plan to make a substantial investment in town. Hopefully, want to be here to, to oversee it. Want to be here to be accountable. And okay, some, I think some good hiking there. I think that's that's not relevant information here. However, he just where wherever he decides to locate in the in the great state of Massachusetts is his decision. If his primary con reason is is for business here fine if it's for other reasons that's his personal that's his personal mm -hmm. endeavor i don't think this town should be asking them kind of personal questions okay let's continue uh, you have a, you have a motion on okay have a motion. i'll second the motion that jonathan made that we continue to june june uh 13th at 6 30 p.m at the waitley town offices, at the waitley town offices. Okay, I second. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. And apologies to all involved for having to come back. That's a good question. Thank you. I'm an elected representative of the people in this county. It's a relevant question. I don't want to treat you for that. But it is a very serious thing. I know you're not going to treat you for that. But your job is to represent our town. It's about our town. It's about our town. It's about our town. Yes, from Otis. I think we'll be fairly okay. Right? Okay. Right. 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 Right.
Yeah. Okay, our next appointment is uh, John Adam Whaley Fire Chief to discuss coordination and communication for events occurring in the If I talk now, nobody can hear me, though. That's assuming I know who listens to you ever, right? I suspect they would catch you. I live in Calgary, but... Oh, good. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I moved it down. I was kind of weird. I sent Brian an email a couple weeks ago because it's come to fruition finally. They have road races in town year after year. And, you know, I know about them, you know, and, and it's public safety. I, I learn about them because they call and they want to store stuff in the fire station, which is fine. I don't know when the race is or anything. Um, I learned that it's going to happen because I see hundreds of people running by house. Well, the issue I have with that is, what if I have a fire call during that time frame? How do I get or how do my people get to the fire station? And my concern is if there is a call and if it's going to be a busy issue, I would be happy to staff an engine and put it on the other side of where the races are going to be, or staff, or staff it up in a different area, or notify neighboring communities for that service. So I guess my question is, if they're having road races, do we have permits in this town for a road race? So that they can, is, I guess, where's, where's the problem lie? Is it that they don't have to have a permit to have a road race? Or is it that they have a permit and nobody tells the fire department that they're doing that? Oh, I don't know, I don't know of any permit. It's not, there's no need for a permit. There's no requirement for a permit. They close the roads, John. But people, yeah, people have come before us to ask. To ask, yes, but it's not a permit. That's my point. Well, let, yes. let me, let me it's ask, permission. Let me ask the police chief. Is, is, are you notified when a road is closed? Well, he closes well, he them. Closes. You close them. You close it, but you get a request to close it, I guess, yeah, rather well, than the day it's us, happening. Can you come up and tell us a little more about the process of how uh, a road gets closed for yeah. a road race? Because I, I thought they did have to come to us to ask. Welcome to my bus, sir. <laughs> Thanks. I thought they did have to come to us to ask. Is my, is the, is my, so now I'm going to learn from the professional. There's probably not much to learn. Um, it's always been an unofficial thing. There's, as far as I know, there's, there's never been a permitting process. There's never been a requirement um, to come to the select board that I'm aware of. Um, we've only had two different events in town. Um, we have the annual Mother's Day Half Marathon, and we had a triathlon prior to that for a number of years. <clears throat> Those are the only two events that we've had. Um, we've had this event at the Mother's Day Marathon. It's not our event. Um, it's a yeah. private organization that, that does it. Um, they've done it in the past without closing the road, and we've had um, some kind of hazardous situations. So we chosen to close the road for you know for the, the few hours and notifying the people in the area uh, but as far as anything else goes that's that's really all we've we've done I, I guess my question well first of all I think we shouldn't be at opposite ends of the of the of the debate where we want to promote these kinds of things going on in Waitley because they come to Whitley because it's a great place to do these things yes. um, but if I were doing an event, and sort of to John's point, why aren't they doing it on the, putting up the tents on the field next door to the fire station? Because I'd rather stand on grass for two hours than pavement, but also to make sure that if a fire call happens, or previously an ambulance call, that they could respond in a timely fashion. So I guess that sort of and I always assumed, well, there must be a reason why they're using the parking lot instead of the, 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 the field between the fire station and the transfer station, but... They were in a field for the Mother's Day race, right? They were both, I think, weren't they? Uh, as they far as I know, they're, they're, they weren't blocking the fire department. No, no, no. I didn't say oh, they weren't. No, yeah. no, they were not, block, they were not blocking the fire okay. department. Yeah, because they, I, they know better than that. I got the impression <laughs> that they were. That's no, no. no, the impression I'm trying to get to is 
that they're not telling the fire department the when, so, yeah. when this, the race is going to happen. So, I mean, if there's if it's a busy day, I mean, if they're going to start hundreds of people at, at a race, they're obviously going to close roads. Well, I, I mean, I think that that's incumbent upon us to notify our town departments as opposed well, to... Well, it's incumbent by you to be notified of that too, John, is what I'm trying to say. Somewhere in, a, in that process, you should know so that you can notify the departments. Could we have a policy maybe on this then? Maybe that would be a... a if there was a permit that they filled out with the town, that would come... When the race starts, when it, you know, what the route is, yeah. and and the, and another one of those hazards is, uh, Chief Savine was at the class, and I was told that uh, Pan Am <laughs> is increasing their rates, their trains, their high speed oh, yeah. trains going through town, uh, to six, was it six or five or six Perfect. schedules, and they're also increasing the speed. Each way. They're go yeah, six going up to hundred. Six, way? six round trip, I believe. Six round trip, three. So and they're going up to 110 miles an hour from 80. Okay. So that affect the marathon thing? It might. The Mother's Day thing? It might. You could, yeah. I mean, yeah, they have to cross the track to, to do that. But. I'm hard pressed to believe we don't want these events taking place. I'm not saying that, John. Right. I don't think, I don't, that's not what I mean. I'm, I'm not, I'm not right. saying that. I just want to notified be notified so should. that we can plan for that. Right, and I think that's, that's a very valid and fair request. And I think it's yeah. an easy solution. Yeah. Of course, it, there's got to be an easy solution somewhere. Just yeah, it sounded like you had already had some suggestions that if you were notified, even if the road is closed, you have a way to, you know, like you say, stash a truck someplace that's that's not mm -hmm. affected. It might still be tr difficult to access if the fire were on a, a part of the road that's closed. Well, yes, but, but if but that if they're starting at the fire station, I would absolutely take a fire truck out of the station and send it to East Waitley or maybe one to West Waitley so that they wouldn't have to deal with the runners. And my people wouldn't have to, some of the people would have to come through them, but at least an engine company would be out the door prior to, yeah. and not have to deal with the race. Yeah. Well, we, we could have a robo call to let everybody in town know the road is closed. No, I don't want to formal announcement. This should be a formal announcement. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want a robo call. I want an email, an official email. Okay, well then. Yeah. <laughs> On my new system. Can I propose something yet? Yeah. Yeah. So we, I propose that, um, of course I propose that Brian does something instead of us, but um, I think it sounds like Brian's already looked into some towns that have a policy or a permit. Um, could we could we take a little closer look at that and see about um, ad adopting some kind of a policy or a procedure um, that might, that would address Absolutely. your, and it would not, do we not want to do something that's going to squelch, obviously, these kind of activities, um, but Clearly, we've got to do something for for our fire chief here, um, and which in directly is for everybody who might be possibly affected by a fire. You know, for, it's everybody's health and safety, really. In the end, um, it would mean we would not we we might not have such a policy until two weeks from now to oh, look at. But I, I, does that seem, seem like a reasonable Fine thing to name. do? But isn't there uh, <coughs> part of our website has permits or something? Is there a folder or, or Maybe. page on a, that has permits? That, well, I, I think aren't so. your fire permits on there? And, uh, if you no, need a, I don't think we have any such permit that exists. At least no, no, I but I'm saying, but, it, but if we're going to ask for a, this kind of a permit, it, it, it should be on that page. I, maybe, an, yeah. maybe an announcement on uh, the opening of the of the dot org page that we now have that policy <coughs> and put it on is with the other permits. Yeah, I think, or or, or, or other uh, facility requests. Yes, yeah. And that would, yeah. it's going to be a limited number, obviously, but right. you could even put the, the Hurley <clears throat> use requests. Right. So it's it's pretty easy to find. Yeah. And then just do a, a, a writable yeah, PDF. That, that seems like it'll be a, a more logical and well thought out way of doing things. Um, and it absolutely should include personally notifying chief of police via yeah, email or whatever that involves into for communication about the future. front door stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. So can we have it? We can have something written up for the next meeting? Or does it need to not go to the next meeting? Can we just do it? Um, well, I hesitate because we might have some stuff to do before the next meeting. Right. Let's so do so this. Okay. okay. So are you okay waiting a month? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We don't have any events coming up, do we, that anyone knows about? Not that I'm aware of. No. But okay. just, just but if something comes up, would you 
should we do. Thank you. There, there is communication. This is this event's been going on for years. Right. Everybody knows it's Mother's Day, the half marathon. Everybody knows the roads closed during that time. It's the second Sunday in May. It's, yeah. yeah, it's not new, and the signs are posted up all around town. I think there was one posted on Chestnut Plain Road near near John's house. The the times, the date, the location, everybody's aware of it. But I agree. Formal communication. Formal communication. Having a, a permit so everybody knows about it. It's it's not a bad idea. But I just I don't want anybody to think that this was just willy nilly thrown out okay. there, and you know we're putting everybody in safety's risk. This, this has been planned out for years yeah. and done okay. the same way. So. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, John. I'm going to eat now. Okay. Okay. John, coming off of my house. Right here. Our next appointment uh, is uh, Tony Signoli uh, from the uh, Signoli Company to discuss possible marijuana retail establishment. Okay, call. Sure. Yes, yes please. please. All right. It is the seat of heat. Hi. It's cooled off a little bit. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Tony Signoli. I'm part of the partnership taking a look at the possibility here in Waitley of a recreational marijuana facility. Uh, I was hoping to allow Attorney Amy Royal, who's our, our main principal uh, of the company. To, to speak before me to give some uh, parameters of what it is that we're looking at. I guess before I'd ask her to take the floor, we appreciate the opportunity to be here this evening. We've had some conversations and we've been looking at this now for a few months. We wanted to try to go about this the right way and not put the round peg, so to speak, into the square hole. Uh, we had been watching very carefully to see what the Commonwealth of Massachusetts was going to do relative to rules and regulations on recreational marijuana. I'm familiar mostly with medical marijuana uh, facilities. I've been able to help cite a few of those for different companies across Massachusetts. And we wanted to be a little more familiar with what was going to be required of recreational, relative to security, relative to other issues, and also as to how to go about working on a host community agreement with the town of Waitley. Um, we have a site in mind. We also wanted to wait for well, another thing, which was the support of selectmen to take a look at an ordinance on that. We didn't want to begin to lobby or push, so to speak, uh, for our own interest and concerns this, until you all were done with that. We had a chance to see the work that you had done. That was impressive and it encouraged us to further pursue this. We had a good opportunity to have a meeting and a few conversations with the town administrator. We appreciate the guidance given to us at this point. We'd like to go forward with an application. As you probably know, tomorrow, uh, June 1st, the applications uh, begin to be received by the Commonwealth. That's the deadline and the opening. Um, we, again, didn't want to rush with all this. Uh, I think just being here tonight and listening a bit, too, we get an even better feel for the character of Waitley. Um, Attorney Royal lives right nearby. I'm from West Springfield. Dave Corgan is here with us this evening. He's another partner. So before I ramble on, I just wanted to say that's how we've gone about this. We come to it after a lot of homework, and making sure that this is something we're going to be able to do. Uh, and again, after really studying both the Commonwealth's rules and regulations and looking at the ordinance <coughs> that you would put forth. So if I could turn it over to Attorney Royal. Good evening. I'm Amy Royal. I want to tell you just a little bit about who I am and why I'm interested in bringing recreational marijuana to Waitley. I've lived in Deerfield for nearly two decades. Um, I'm an attorney, and marijuana usage in a medical way has been really personal to me. Um, several years ago, my mom was diagnosed with cancer, and she ultimately passed away, but I saw the struggles that she had in doing chemotherapy and how sick it made her, how it just completely destroyed the quality of life she had um, the, the last several months that she was alive. And at that time, we didn't have access as a community <coughs> to marijuana use in that way. And I really think she could have benefited from that. Um, when medical marijuana came into play, I felt really passionate about that and wanted to make sure that people in our community had access to it. 
and wanted to put together the right team. I wanted to have a woman-owned company. I wanted to have other people philosophically that felt the same way that I did about marijuana use in a holistic way. Um, and so really in talking to people about in the community about marijuana usage holistically, some of the, the issues that I encountered with people was access. Maybe they didn't have medical insurance or they weren't someone that was likely to see a doctor, um, but still needed to have access for a whole variety of ailments. I came to team up with Tony, with David, with Dr. Shockett Mateen, um, primarily to devise a plan that provided marijuana to the community in a really responsible way, in a holistic way, with education as a component to that. You know, I'm a mom to two teenage boys. We live in Deerfield. Obviously, I'm committed to making sure that marijuana is not dispensed to minors uh, and feel really passionate about that and education surrounding that. Um, but it was really important for me to have it in our community in looking at, at my mother and her failing health and how her quality of life was completely gone. My family is from Bernardston and I just saw a need in this community throughout Franklin County. Uh, in terms of <coughs> our plan going forward, we really want to collaborate with local farmers and provide and sell a local product. That's important to me. Um, as someone who lives in this community and wanting to see it thrive. Also, it's important to me to bring jobs here. You know, we, we want to hire a team, hire, uh, you know, people, provide job opportunities and really have an economic impact here in Waitley. Uh, you know, we've thought a lot about safety and security concerns. We've looked at and, and have negotiated and executed a letter of intent with a location. I, I always refer to it as the final markdown building. <laughs> the one on State Right is, you know where it is. The old, um, the old but, medical residence. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and I thought that that location, you know, could provide safety. It's not right in a neighborhood, has good access for people, a good parking lot. Uh, we're committed to, you know, meeting with the chief of police, meeting with other public safety officers, <coughs> getting guidance and suggestions on how we can enhance security. Obviously, you know, Tony had mentioned I'm an attorney, so I'm all about compliance and studying laws and regulations, and we will meet the state ones, but that as a community, we're also, you know, meeting any expectations that the police department may have. Um, so we're really here tonight to ask the board for consideration in bringing about discussions for a host agreement with Wheatley and what our business can bring to the town and what we can offer to you. We'd love to hear any questions or thoughts or ideas. Uh, again, we've moved at this cautiously and slowly, uh, given that we wanted to be sure what this required. I'm familiar again with medical marijuana facilities and the safety aspects there, security, seem to be a little bit more stringent than recreational. But I think we can bring from those experiences a conversation with the police chief hopefully to talk about how would we do this, how can we do this. The other thing for us, and it, Attorney Royal touched on it pretty well, the holistic aspect of this. Not with us this evening is, is our other partner, Dr. Shockett Mateen. He is a significant medical doctor with a very large practice in Ludlow, Massachusetts. Uh, for him, this needs to be a very holistic type of facility. This is intriguing to us, that site, because we know this isn't gonna be walking traffic. We would not want that. And, and for lack of a better way to say it, I don't have a I haven't really figured out a better way to say this still at this point. We don't want this, we would not want this, and we know that you would not want this to be a head shop, so to speak. This isn't, you know, the uh, uh, Cheech and Chong kind of a thing from back in the day. We, this is very different. By having Dr. Mateen as a partner uh, and very involved in this, the way that we'd be moving out, out looking at this is much more like medical marijuana dispensary, looking to be able to attract people, from outside of the area even, would be wanting to come up perhaps 
to have a consultation, find out what might work for them. Hopefully, if there is some local product that can be sold, that if we could do that, uh, along with having a doctor's influence there. Uh, it would be a little bit more along the lines of certainly uh, a medical dispensary in that regard. And by holistic, looking at taking care of people, not just supplying them with buying a product, you know, an edible or, or these other products that are there that, that we know will, will be offered by many others. So I, I want to first, just by full disclosure, let the board know that uh, I've known Amy for a number of years, just, just so everyone mm. understands that. Um, but my question is, it, it seems like you're, and, it, and again, it's my naivete about what you need to apply for, perhaps. But it seems like you're moving towards applying for a retail license, but the, you're going to operate on, a, on the medical side. And, I, and, I, and I'm just trying to figure out the, the, the differences there, whether it would be sort of a, a combined or what have you. Then my other question is, is, is simply a, you, you, you go to this facility, a logistical question, you go to a facility for treatment, for holistic, whatever it is, and you drive there. <clears throat> and you're getting in your car after 15 minutes, five hours, I don't, I don't know how much time, and you're driving away. And I don't understand is it, does it operate similar to if you go to a bar, you, you, you leave in your car if you've had two beers, but you don't leave in your car if you've had 10? I, 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 no, there's no consumption of marijuana in the facility. No. There's not. Oh, so, no. So no, can you just just elaborate, because I'm confused, and I apologize for that, but I don't, so yeah. I'm very confused. a good question. I appreciate this, too, because it allows us to differentiate what we're talking about versus other recreational that you may have heard about in the media from Hamden uh, County and other areas. We're, we're looking to be a little bit different in that regard. Yeah, so no consumption on okay. site. And the reason that I felt that I wanted to approach it holistically, similar to medical, but have it be retail, is because I've been concerned about access to people that don't typically go to a doctor, aren't comfortable with a doctor, don't have health insurance, don't have adequate health insurance, that those people aren't left behind, so to speak, that we are providing that environment for them that isn't medical, but is in consultation with a medical doctor to make it responsible. Because like Tony said, we don't want to be a head shop. That's not our intent. <laughs> What, what size of, the, of that building are you looking at occupying? 2,600 square feet. Is that the entire? No, it'd be about one third of the building. One we think that over time we could expand into further spaces in the building. Okay, and that, that side is in Whaley, the other side is in Deerfield. Part of it, I think. Yeah, you know, I've, I've noted, yeah, the Wakeley side, the red building. So your access is all in Wakeley. It's all in It's all in Wakeley. It's all in Wakeley. But is your act, is all both access points in Wakeley? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's a long so point. it would be the south facing part of the building, but not the old frame shop? Or would it include the frame it's shop? The red, the, it's the, the red, red building. building. Right. It's the red building. It's the red building. The other side is Yankee Candle. Right. Right. Yankee Candle's corporate offices yeah. on the other side. If okay. you're looking at the right across the circle. Right. 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 The left hand side. Big Next big. to the did the did the old yes. final markdown close again? And I no, it is the So That's that would be what you were using. Yes. Yeah. It's the Yankee Peddler right now. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but and it's a, but that would be <coughs> you would be using that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I was assuming you were moving into a, a new part of an unused part of the okay. I apologize. I'll stop talking because I clearly don't know what I'm talking about. To, to Amy's point, what I just mentioned, my name is David Horgan. Uh, I've been in medical education for 20 years. I got the AMA Freddie Award sorry, for medical education. David Horgan, David, H-O-R-G-A-N. Uh, we believe that a big part of this to be responsible is the proper education. So we would provide education for customers. This is education that's driven by a physician. Uh, education for children in schools to understand that this is not something to be played around with, uh, especially the edible portion of what's for sale in these facilities. 
So that's going to be a big part of what we're, why we say we're driving this more like a medical facility. And you might even find that our education is even higher because most of the medical facilities, once you get in there, it's just a retail store. There's not a lot of consultation going on there in terms of proper dosing. All they're really talking about is different blends and brands, and that's not really what we're about. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling up the assessor's map because I really want to see what part of that property right, is. Right, sure. So, um, so do you need a medical card to shop at your store? No. No. No, this is what's, this is what's been proved in the state of Massachusetts as a recreation. What hours of operation are you looking at? 10 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock at night. We would do the uh, Tuesday through Sunday, closed on Monday for inventory. Okay. Uh, yeah, Paul and Taya, Weber Road. Um, it seems like the prospective owners um, are very concerned about education, very concerned about a holistic approach. Is this going to be a not for profit? No, it's no. not. It is would a you have any interest in opening a not for profit? It takes many years to get that certification. Not in the weight league there, Doc. <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> yeah. I've been involved on the medical marijuana side, again, not as an owner or a partner, but yeah. as public relations and governmental, and I'm familiar with how that works. It would be another bar that we would have to achieve in this regard, yeah. and it would be difficult. It would also, I don't want to say hinder, but it would come into question as to how Post agreement with Waitley would work a little bit as well too. Um, yeah, but I appreciate that thought. And who's, yeah. who's the physician in Ludlow? Uh, Shaka. Dr. Shaka Mateen. I thought you spell that last. Could you spell that please? M A T I N. And if you look online for the Shifa medical practice. Shifa S H. It's S H I F A. And what's his specialty? Okay. He's internal medicine. Yeah. And. Um, he has seen that the, uh, the opioid crisis is also getting addressed where people are responsibly using cannabis instead of opioid medication. And I think we all agree that that is a big problem and Waitley can make a big difference in curbing that. Is there, is there an operation like this somewhere else in the state with your similar approach? I don't think you're going to see a retail. You're not going to see a retail like that. They're just going to open up like it's a package store and just try to sell as much as they can. I'm not 100% sure I understand sort of the, the like the medical educational holistic side. Is it a medical facility? No, not really. But somehow the, uh, the education provided is somehow <coughs> related to a doctor who we not met and so on. Um, so I, I guess I, I would have further, I, I guess I don't really understand that. And maybe that you're not prepared to answer it at the level of, of detail that I would. I am an educator though, mm -hmm. so I'm not hopeless. Um, <laughs> um, and, and I think it would be interesting to, to understand better how it works with your business model. Because like, well, like what, you can promise a lot of things, but in the end the license is a license to sell. Right, and then you don't really have to do anything but sell in the end. So I guess I, I, I think, I mean, it all sounds really nice, but I don't think I understand it that well. So you were, it seemed to me, like at first I was like, what, what are these people here for? They haven't got a, a community agreement in front of me to look at, but, but it sounded like you were looking for some feedback about what kind of things, mm -hmm. and I would like to understand that part better, um, I guess, other, other than folks, you know, individual people's good intentions. I guess I, I want to understand how that works as a, as a business model no. and, and how and how that's kind of related to everything else. I can sort of get a little bit out of your personal stories there, mm -hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, in relation to the business, I don't really understand. Yeah, so I think in terms of looking at the business model and trying to like personally feel that I want to try provide access to people in the community irrespective of whether they saw a doctor um, had health insurance for coverage I really wanted to find a team that helped augment every aspect I was trying to accomplish which is 
with David. David didn't talk about this, but he's done a lot of education with adolescents around a whole bunch of issues, and so I thought he would be a really good person to, um, to bring on board and address that with the doctor. Really, I was concerned about, you know, when Massachusetts went to recreation, all that, oh my gosh, we are gonna have all these head shops everywhere, and people are gonna be doling out things without any thought to it, and David's right, even in a lot of the medical marijuana dispensaries, it's really like you go in and they give you a menu of like the different blends they have, but it, but there's no, no there's no education around it. There's no talk about proper dosage, any of that. And so with Dr. Mateen, because he's really dedicated his career to helping people, helping patients, um, in in prescribing marijuana for them, that he brought that sort of legitimacy and credibility and could translate that into the recreational world because rec recreational marijuana is here like in Massachusetts. Um, but I wanted to make sure that in, in our community it was done in a responsible way. I don't want to add anything to yeah. why like this holistic approach. Well, I think from our other perspective too, and, and not to make it sound like this is completely and totally, you know, we're looking at this as a charity thing. Certainly we want to make money. And if we do, we know that in the host community agreement with Waitley, you know, there's benefit to Waitley in that regard. But the other aspect of this, to try to maybe really answer the question you just asked, is have we been involved with this in different parts of Massachusetts? Some of this comes down to geography and competition and the laws by the Commonwealth. You cannot advertise these, these, these uh, recreational or medical. So much of this is social media, word of mouth, et cetera. And then there's the geography aspect of this too. One of the reasons we waited so long on this is certainly we wanted to see what you would do as a board of selectmen as to how to regulate and where it's okay to do it and, and all that. And we wanted to also obviously wait for the state, which has taken a long time to, to, to square it all down. But when you look at the geography, it's a competitive situation for us too. To if we were to try to do this in Northampton, or East Hampton, or Springfield, or Chickadee. The competition is extreme there right now. This is an expensive endeavor to come into because of the security that's required, because of the lease and other aspects of this as well. But if we're here, we can market that is what we're thinking. Market what Amy has better stated than myself as far as the holistic aspect of this. Market through a medical doctor like uh, Dr. Mateen and his circle of contacts that we're here. We want people to come here, buy, be advised, get the drift of what might help them that might be here. Uh, and take it home is really what it comes down to. But come away with an understanding and education of what this is. And you know, to that impact as well, or that effect, if you look now, tomorrow, you'll know where every one of these proposed sites is in Massachusetts. It's on the Commonwealth's website. Some of the applications are already there now. And if you look at that, we're thinking that's something that helps us, that people can get on 91, come here, you know, uh, and perhaps while they're here, see other things as well, too, whether it's Yankee Candle, et cetera. We, wanna, we can promote the site, the town, et cetera. We cannot promote the product. So that's, that's the other aspect, we try to be a little bit more direct. There's that benefit of, of coming here to Waitley. And as I say, if you look around as to where the competitors will be, uh, it, it would be fierce if we were in other areas. We have looked at an awful lot of other places, from Ware and Warren to some of the other communities that I just mentioned. And we just thought this might be the kind of place that someone might get in their car and say, I'll take a 20 minute ride or a 30 minute ride. Maybe I'll come up from Hamden County and you know, no pressure kind of a thing. There's no one consuming there. That's another benefit for us too. There are a lot of people that would come to buy this product, get this kind of advice, do it in a holistic kind of a sense, but who don't want to be in the environment where people are actually using the product. Um, there's probably some insurance aspects that benefit us too by not having that be the case. Um, and so but that's, I hope that better answers. Consumption licenses are, my understanding is those aren't really on the table yet. Right. They're not, okay. not from okay. the Commonwealth, right. but certainly I think that there are some that are out there that are hoping to do that. That's like the next phase, yeah. If you look at what the legislature is okay, saying, so you're saying, saying your next that's phase next. is not 
going to be having consumption outside. We don't outside. want to go in that direction because of the things that we just said. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, not to sound I get, I get wondering why people bring that up, but yeah, you know, I understand. Yeah. You know, we want the, you know, 67-year-old lady who maybe lives in East Long Mountain to feel comfortable. I'm going to take a day trip or I'm going to take a ride, go somewhere where there aren't folks using the product on site, and I'm going to get uh, in medical advice as to how to go about this without having to go through the medical card, recreational insurance, and all that. But I think even the other part of that too is we hope that there's opportunity to expand out. What else would we want to add to something like this? What else is holistic in that regard? You know, is it uh, you know yoga is the biggest thing that I keep hearing from different right. folks and whatnot. But looking to provide other things. That lady who maybe has a, an issue with arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, or you know something along those lines, and she's looking to come for this and maybe a yoga class or something else and then she's off for the Wheatley Inn maybe to have dinner, meet somebody there, go over to Yankee Candle, etc. So that was the thought. It's, it's the area that helps sell it for us too. And it's that whole advertising thing that is the other problem for, the, for, for us. And we thought that this could help. This would be the way that we would address that. How do you compete with everybody else? It kind of dates me when I was a kid. I always just love those AMC ads and commercials. You know, where they would come out with wild, crazy things to try to sell AMCs, and it would always be, what would you do if you had to you know, compete with the big three? That's what we're looking at here, too. Most of these other recreational players, as you know, are already medical marijuana dispensaries. They get the first shot at this. How do you compete with those folks? By doing something very, very different, and we think, do we think this is it? Christian, on the, the host agreement, I don't know, maybe Brian knows the answer. Is there a time period that this would apply to, or is it on an annual? What what is uh, yeah. what would there be restrictions on that? Because I guess one of my concerns is if we give you the host agreement and some reason something happens six months down the road and you close shop, well, in the meantime we've missed the, the door for three other companies that wanted to come to town. You can have more than one. You can have more than one. Can have more than one. Yes. Okay, but, but but the location would be. Uh, but tied up for a while, I guess, as long as you're you're there or whatever. Is there yeah, is there a time limit or a time limit pertaining to the oh, 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 host agreement? Host agreement. Or is, is it sunset? Is five it sunset? years. The, five uh, years. They're they're five year. They're five year. They're five agreements. year host but, agreement. Okay. Yeah. But presumably, if they go out of business, then the host agreement. Would be <laughs> yeah, we could put a stipulation in there, but is the host yeah. agreement can they can they? Let, let's there say there aren't that many host agreements out there. Right, mm -hmm. but they, but right. if, if you if you guys had financial troubles and you needed to sell your business, would the host agreement be part of that sale, or would that just automatically revert back to the town and the town creates a new host agreement? Well, I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure we would back. We would <coughs> sure we are free to include yeah. language as to what we would like. I believe yeah. the special permit with the zoning yeah. bylaws are personal to the uh, applicant. So, okay. Okay. certainly you have to contact the Cannabis Control Commission. Yeah. They have to be notified. But as of what the town requires. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll, yeah, it, it may be that we can put something in that yeah. says if you, if you got a business. I mean, like when does this agreement end? I think there's something like that in the solar uh, pilots and things like that. So, Not that we're wishing that on, on you guys, obviously. Yeah. But it's it's you know, very, I, very unlikely. I, 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 can, I can imagine. So, I but, can imagine. But, but the I'm just, yeah, industry, yeah, just they do, yeah, but they, they do have a five-year limit, and then after five years, you renegotiate. Uh, and that's the... So it's not a yearly renegotiate, right. like the liquor licenses are. I'll speak for myself. You know, this town has, relatively speaking, overwhelmingly supported the development of, of marijuana sites for economic development reasons. Yeah. Um, the, the, the vote passed overwhelmingly. Um, town meeting was a, 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 a pretty clear indication of the support. And as we just saw, this room was packed and everyone knew what was next on the agenda and no one stayed. Um, so, I personally think that this board should do everything possible to take advantage of what sounds to me as a pretty reasonable and well thought out approach that would 
achieve what we tried to achieve over the past year, let's say, with marijuana development uh, in terms of the, the economic impact and, and work with, with, with these guys to, to make this a reality and move forward on, on the development of a host agreement and, and really be a partner because I think the partnership is the way to create something that will work for them and will work best for the town. Um, and it sounds like they want to be true partners with us to the extent we don't have a financial stake in it, obviously. Um, so I, I just want to put that out there, that I, I think that we are remiss if we suddenly don't continue down the pathway that we've started to go down to town. Okay, well, we can't obviously approve host agreement today without seeing it. I, I guess maybe the, the, if you call it action, a recommendation would, would be from this, this board is to say we're interested in, and I guess encourage you to proceed with what you have to do following the regulations, town bylaws, town meeting, uh, I mean, uh, town permits, whatever, uh, and present, come back with a, with a host community agreement. Is that? Well, who do, who do, do you guys devote the host agreement or is it done in conjunction with our town administrator? I, I, I don't know the logistics of it. It's an it's agreement, so it's a... Uh... Right, but who initiates, who, who starts to draft the language, I guess is my question. It could be either side. Could be either either one. One. If, if we, I, may, we may be looking at multiple host agreements, um, so maybe we might want to generate our own template agreement, um, but that's something we should discuss. Yeah, I, I just want to be cognizant of the fact that you're overworked already. Well, yeah. And, 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 I get the point about having consistency with our host agreements, but the different enterprises may really want to function very differently. And, but and you, so can, you can still have some some consistency, guidelines. some guidelines, some yeah. things that that you that you know we, we, this is what we really want out of it. Yeah. And no matter who you are, right. you know. And, and I and I want to I don't want to be cognizant of. They may have a time frame that they need to operate under because of their business model. Um, and and if we again, if we want to make this work, we should be yeah. aware of, of their time frame. And, and if they need to do it because it, because Brian's got a little bit on his plate over the next month, clearly. Um, I, I, I just want to. Okay, so so are we in agreement to encourage them to proceed? Yes. Uh, I guess so. Okay. Jim, Jim has uh, a, a. And this is a selfish question, question okay. because my only interest is tax revenue for the town. And I'm still a bit confused. Do you have to have a problem to buy marijuana in your store? No. Can you just go in and get some gummy bears or whatever it is and put them in your bag? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But you gotta take them home. Yeah. Yeah, oh no. Yeah, that's not the issue. Yeah. No. No, but that, that would be there still, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you don't have to see the doctor or get a consult or okay. Thank you. That's a good question. I just have one one question. Is there going to be consultation with uh, Mass DOT as far as that intersection? Because I know there was some concerns about a previous intersection increasing traffic, and that's going to increase a large amount of traffic in that area. I don't know if there's going to be any consultation with Mass DOT as far as signaling or anything like that, because that's going to increase a lot of traffic coming out directly across from. Um, the Circle K, which is already a, a difficult intersection. We should have those conversations. Um, I, I'm wondering to that end whether you guys have done running numbers that, that speculate how much automobile traffic you need to make this really work for you. Yeah, it's on average 30 to 60 customers a day. So that's not a Get 60 cars. Even, more even the final markdown is that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that. Barely, but but yeah, I, I, the average customer <laughs> spends about $80. Yeah. So. But there, there could probably be better signage in that lot. Because I know when I'm, I've not been in there a heck of a lot, but you know, there's a, the, the kind of the easy way to get in on 5 and 10, and there's kind of the easy way if you were coming across the river on 116. And almost everything else is, is hard. And if so, so I, I can appreciate that there there might be ways, and even with just signage to improve it, 
Um, it still doesn't help you make a left turn going out of <coughs> any of those places, but that I mean that's that's a current problem. Right. That, that, right. That's true for any business that might for any business that might want to move in there. But, uh, so maybe to follow up on Jim's concern, I, I think yeah. the planning board has been involved some with Mass DOT and, and even Deerfield. I think there was another another business going in in that location, and they did have meetings with it with with uh, Mass DOT, and I don't know the outcome, but yeah. at least that, that was that was, a, that was a location in Deerfield, which we're looking at a different exit other than out onto five and ten. They were going to exit another way, not out of five. Oh, okay. okay. Well, no, I, was, I thought they were looking for a cut to go out the other way. So, so the ultimate use will require a site plan approval. Yeah. Site plan approval. Right. Yeah. Planning board right. would right. 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 But that would be true of any business, obviously. That would. Right. Be, well, that's right. I mean, this is the site of the Celtic right. Pub that I wanted to open. For yeah. Years. There's still space. There would still be space, Jonathan. What's that? There still there space. Would still be space. Okay. I understand there's a property at Don Christian. You might be able to get for cheap. I won't go there. Okay. Do we have any any other discussion comments? Thank you very much. Thank you. This is helpful. I mean, this yeah. give you guys what you were looking for. Yeah, I think the South is where we, we need to go forward with the Commonwealth for application, and, and we would start to put together a host community agreement, and at the same time, uh, perhaps Brian, who we could bother you again on the other permits that are that are necessary on this site to find out how we go about it. We understand the community meeting is needed at some point as well, too. Yeah, public. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Seven days notice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't know if you looked at the schedule, but the next person up is going for the host agreement. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was going to hang out. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. We make, thank business, you. We make business. I don't think we've ever had this many attorneys in one of our. We should have had one more, so. Yeah. Uh, clearly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's move on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. On the agenda, uh, next uh, appointment is uh, Stephen Herbert from Urban Growth Incorporated to discuss host community agreement for marijuana cultivation located at 149 Christian Lane, Waverly. Good evening. I think uh, what I'll do first uh, is give you what I presented last night to the community outreach meeting. So at least you would have a copy Thank of your you. slides. I know you saw it. But I saw it. Have a copy yeah. of your slides. Thank you. I'll take it. That's okay. I saw it too. Yeah. I'll, get you later. I think I'll, I'll share it. Brian can look over on mine. Oh, I got one now. Yeah. But maybe a two down is thick. Could you look highlight what's in here? I guess we're not yeah, this, looking um, for an hour discussion, but an hour yeah, presentation. It, it, <laughs> so um, the first page was just to, the first, second slide is just to give some of the background on what we're allowed to do and not allowed to do. So out of the Waitley, the first bullet point is out of the Waitley bylaw that is there that, and that we have to be away from the school, the actual growing part, that it must be secure so that young people can't get in, and that we do not sell to anyone. We're a cultivation site, uh, not a retail site, and so that is totally prohibited. So what we, our model was to do was to grow in greenhouses. And the reason for growing in greenhouses, this is a way to cooperate with local farmers as well as to lower the costs for everybody involved in growing the crop. The um, expense of going into a building, not only do you have to light it, but you have to cool it because the lights create a lot of heat. And so doing it outside in a greenhouse seemed to be um, a new way to go and we've done a lot of research in evaluating that as a way to grow. So at the uh, Long Plain Farm on Christian Lane, there are many greenhouses. We were connected with them through another farmer in, Wait in Hadley 
who um, would like to do it, but Hadley has a moratorium on until um, November. And his land in Amherst that he could have done it on, that he would have used, um, uh, is in APR, so agricultural restriction. So he could not use that land. So he put us in touch with this farm, and Scotty and Wayne um, are very eager to, to um, try this out and um, cooperate with us in raising cannabis um, for retail stores or manufacturers to use. We believe that there's going to be a shortage of cannabis with all these retail um, establishments opening. And so it's a, an opportunity for us to get going um, and uh, have it up and running. At least uh, we hope we do get going. Okay. <laughs> so, so stop me at any time if you would like to ask questions. I, I'm a professor at the University of Massachusetts. I've been there nearly 40 years. It will be 40 years next February. Um, could retire, but not trying to yet. Um, and again, I apologize if I'm jumping around, but yep. talking about greenhouses, when we had uh, a planning board hearing here two months ago, I guess it was maybe, um, there were residents who were uh, passionate, understandably so, about um, the cover on the greenhouses in terms of emanation of light. And that there were people who really wanted to see a, 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 not a clear plastic greenhouse, but a, a white covered greenhouse because it would diminish the light on neighboring houses. And I, and I, I was just like, that, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Because we, while we want to promote this, we also want to be very cognizant of impact on neighbors. And so I guess my first glance question is, would you be willing to do things for your greenhouses, along with the Hitkoskis, obviously, that really appeased the, the concerns about light, et cetera, that neighbors may, or not may have, absolutely do have? Right. Our main way of growing is going to be through the growing season where we will not need light. Because of the delay in um, getting licenses approved, and there's many reasons for that, um, we may try with one greenhouse a grow over the winter to get some cash flow going. We're very cognizant of that issue. Um, the farmer in Hadley says, because he offered two greenhouses, right slap, I could have touched them from the road. I says, no, we can't do that. Um, but he said, we could cover it with this white material so it wouldn't shine right through. So we know about that. Um, the greenhouse will do will be perpendicular to the houses, uh, the closest houses. And in our community outreach last night, that issue was brought up um, and we're very cognizant of that and we can do shielding on one side which would block all the light which would be the north side and on the south side um, there's the barns so there's no light that would be a, a problem and the west it's across fields a long way from any houses mm -hmm. and the east there's trees that would block so yeah, we, we, we will do things that might be a problem. Most of, the, most of our grow operation would be during the summertime. So you wouldn't be having um, additional light, you'd we be using natural light, we, and that was uh, kind of to, to go to your cost savings things. To yes, that, that is another reason for that, because lighting is expensive, but we could yeah. afford to get some lights, but to deck out every greenhouse with lights, we wouldn't want to do that. But you might do some. We might do one greenhouse. Um, but we will take precautions to make sure that's not a problem. For the neighbors? For the neighbors, yes. The new town regulations require that the sides be blocked if it's lit. 
greenhouses. Right, and I'm just, but I'm also thinking, you know, light going up. There's no, yeah, there's, our light. regulations don't cover that. I know, I'm asking, I understand, light, that's light, what I'm asking about this. Yeah, light going up will go up in a straight line. It doesn't bounce, bounce off the down unless it's into a cloud and then comes down. Yeah. So it's a direct beams of light okay. in direction. So I we can I just want to make sure that yeah. we're... Right. But as, as you know, as a physicist, I, all my best friends are astronomers, and we have an observatory up in the side of the mountain. And light going up is bad for everybody, and so that's to me that's a that's a problem. Lighting up greenhouses uh, yeah, for for other locations, I think it is specified your lighting has to be downward facing. Um, but light, lighting up greenhouses, I think, is an awful idea. I mean, I know we have some that are that are lit up. And I we just, won't have colored lights. Oh, it doesn't matter what color the lights are. We can see the colored lights in Hadley. I, I don't think yeah, point. <laughs> that, yeah. I don't think any of these are, are lit have lights today, right? These greenhouses. So. They have, these, um, these ones don't. They have lighting in. They can switch on to see where you're going, but not the grow lights. They're not growing lights. Not growing lights. Yeah. Right. Well, again, I, I'm just raising it that I know it's not required, but I think that to avoid conflict with neighbors, and as Mr. Signoli will attest, good PR is preventative PR. Yes, we want to have that. <laughs> so I would, like, I, I would encourage you as part of this host agreement that it just, it, it would be automatic that the white cover is going to diminish any light so you don't get into the argument about what happens with light shooting straight up. It's covered. It's, 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 we're, we're, we're hedging our bets. Yes. That's and what I, I, I totally agree with right. looking into that. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we're having the package what I drafted out following Brian giving me. Um, Montague and Salisbury, I think it was. Um, host community agreements. Yeah, those those were ones that, that I found doing some research. Um, right, and so so the board hasn't. This is new to us as it is to everybody else. Okay. Um, so uh, we haven't discussed the, yeah. what what the board wants in a host community agreement. I mean, in the past, when this sort of thing has come up, we would make a, like a subcommittee, a negotiating committee, uh, usually having one person from the Board of Selectmen, uh, have Brian, or whoever was town administrator at the time. Um, this was like for the solar agreements. Uh, and then we had some the finance committee on those. It might be that in this case, a more relevant would be to have a police chief or someone from public safety on a kind of a subcommittee to kind of sort out uh, a lot of details. Uh, and again, there's not there's not a lot out there. You said Montague and what was the other one? Montague, Montague was the closest one. Was the closest there one. There was a handful of other ones. And that was a yeah. vertically integrated, they were. Right, I know it's not the same. Yeah. And yeah. But but that, that just, just goes yeah. to show you that there's there's not a lot uh, a lot out there. Um, so it might take a little more intense work to to kind of Come up with good things for comparison, um, and then look into what it is because this is all new, of course, to everybody. What should go into a good host agreement is uh, it's not obvious. So, well, we yeah, that, that's a good thought. But keep in mind, we also have uh, planning board and ZBA mm -hmm. getting involved in this, in addition to to us, I guess. Yep. So, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. I, th I think the host community agreement should, the zoning board of appeals, it'll require a special permit and the planning board will have their say with, with site plan approval and conditions. So, so I, I think our bait, so I, I think stay out of the bylaws are pretty, yeah. pretty good. Um, I think this would focus more on, well it's really intended more, more to focus on community impacts mm -hmm. um, and compensation for those. Yep. That seems to be the pattern mm -hmm. of the few that we have. So how do you, Brian, how do you propose we, I mean, I want to be consistent. I think that we, we should we should encourage 
the 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 drafting of a second host community agreement. Um, in the previous one, we didn't talk about, uh, you know, and Joyce has a very valid point about the, the committee that's been created in the past for solar pilots and things like that, whether we should do that. But again, if we're going to do this, we should do it. We, we don't want to wait around. Right. Yeah. Why, why don't we ask planning board if they want to do this? Because this those agreements be, with the select board. Yeah. Right, but to this would be foreign to them. It, it doesn't contain much about land use or okay. or any sort of. This is this is impact on the town. Yeah. This is right. this it's is not this town finance. This is yeah. Um, well, yeah. Sure well, we do that finance on the committee in addition to yeah. security or from, our police. Yeah. From my point of view, we won't have much impact on the town. We're using existing mm -hmm. greenhouses mm -hmm. on an existing farm, just changing a crop. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And, yeah. even the greenhouses that we use during the summertime to grow cannabis or marijuana, whichever <coughs> term you need, um, will still be available for the farmers to use for their seedlings for their other crops. So it's really little. No, no. I, completely understand yeah. but where we have to be cautious kind of going to do things the first time oh, I, so, so that, that I'm that's, not disagreeing with that either process and, yeah yeah um, um, it, it, it's just it, it might facilitate this happening on a time scale that would be uh, you know, that people would be happier with I if, agree. and in um, I now the classes are out I've done my last workshop I've done, there's a whole bunch of things off my plate now. Um, I actually have time during the day to put towards this. I know. And you're, you're going to be around? I like that. Uh, that yeah. <laughs> yeah. For the next you're gonna five weeks, I'll be in town. Yeah. So they, that's that kind of on our, that seems to me like that's the time frame. We're, look, we're not looking at something that's going to take three months. I hope not. Um, no. We're looking at something, we want this to be in, in units of weeks rather than units of uh, I, I would. I would encourage that. I know I certainly don't have the time. And, 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 and it's unusual that I have the time during the day. Right. Um, and so that's why I feel like I, I could step up to be on that uh, kind of committee. I think if we call Paul and Taya, he might be he might be willing. We've got the police chief right here now. We can ask if he's willing. Um, can you think of... of uh, I think the email should go to the fire chief. Oh, we should. Oh, man. Do you want, you want to get him back here right now or something? I'll drop it off on his door. <laughs> um, who else? Well, you guys can worry about who else. But we want to make this as inclusive as possible. Um, uh, within reason? <laughs> within reason, yes, within reason. Numbers sometimes prevent progress. How, how does this affect your application to the state? Do you have to wait for these folks? Yes, we have to yeah. wait on this one. Yeah. This is the last thing that we have to do. Yeah. The, you Community. actually have the host agreement signed. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Tony, you're in the same boat. Yeah. yeah. No, no they, they, their host agreement, yeah. their clock starts tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Our mm -hmm. clock started last May. May one. Oh right. Okay. I'm but sorry. We would okay. be in the same boat, meaning that the Commonwealth needs the host agreement. It's yes. part of the, the beach. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it might be being a little bit picky, but I don't think you've had seven days notice on your meeting in the newspaper. Because yes, I'm a, I, I, I teach physics for a living. 29 minus 23 is 6. That's which newspaper you were looking at, Joyce. One of them did have seven. On the 22nd? Yes. yes. So what, like the recorder, or is this like the bus? Yeah. And we're not in the we're not in the Gazette's territory. They we're will not, not deliver to my house. The Gazette is delivered to my house. Yeah, they yeah. won't deliver to ours. I, deliver I live further away from Northampton. Yeah, I you know. Do. I don't know why they won't deliver to ours. Well, house. I can guarantee you that my the recorder there. The Gazette's been delivered to my house for thirty five yeah. years. So you yeah. can you can tell them though when you select for it. We we missed our paper last Sunday too. I get the recorder electronically, just so we're clear. The same person delivers both. It should have been in the re, uh, Greenfield Recorder earlier because mm -hmm. they were not yeah. It was a mix-up. Mm, so it sounds like a technicality. Yeah. But, but we only have to have one newspaper. 
Then it sounds like right. splitting hairs to me. Okay, so we're gonna have police, finance, and and Joyce on a. And Brian could ask. Right. Yeah, yeah. we can Brian. ask all of those to participate. Okay. Anybody else we need? Anybody's not a case you want? I don't. Paul. Who? Paul Newland. Why? I know just somebody's not on a town committee already. No, I think that's I that's know. five, including Brian. I think that's no, it's four. Oh, Brian's on that list. Yeah. Yeah, four if it includes Brian. If and assuming we get Paul and Taylor. Yeah, well, so. he'll say yes. I, I think those four are directly relevant to okay. right. the operation. Yeah. I think if we start bringing other people, it's going to be mm -hmm. a little bit tangential. Yeah. Okay. Plus, we had enough trouble getting three of us so together. Be a, yeah. and, and, and you guys can start to put together a schedule. Mm -hmm. This would be a subcommittee? No, it's just a. Well, we're we're doing doing ad hoc committee. Is that yeah. what you're calling? Yeah, maybe ad hoc committee. Where you don't have to publicize and advertise. Right. No. Ad hoc. Okay. Because they're not a decision making. Right. With no authority. It's a recommendation. Right. We come up with a host agreement that we right. recommend. Okay. I think our job is done there. Okay. Any other you comments? have any more questions for me? No. You this no. ad hoc committee will communicate. Oh, oh, yeah. Like I, I, I think I, I got I got a quick look at this agreement, and I I did have a few questions um, about it, but it's kind of in. Real, if you haven't read the one from Montague, you wouldn't necessarily understand the questions. That might be something for a smaller group. You've read the one. No, no. I'm, I'm just. Mean, I, I don't want to use right. everybody offline. else's time. Off should be kind of offline from from this meeting. Yeah. Okay. Um, but we can make that happen. I like, guess at the earliest possible uh, time. Okay. That, that would be reasonable. Try and do it as quickly as we can. Because we also want this to be a successful business. I, there's no doubt about that. I mean, we need successful businesses in our town. And we meaning, that's what I think. Okay, let's move on. We've okay. A few other things, yeah. Thank you, you guys, very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. thanks. Let's move through this fast. Yeah, okay, old business, town hall project update and discussion. <laughs> we stopped making good decisions at about 9 o'clock. Yeah. yeah. 8.45. I'll just throw out this thing. I, I think that we should be pushing to have this thing wrapped up and tied with a bow this summer. With the, with, the, with, the, with the ribbon cut and whatever it is. Let's just get this done. People are eager to see this, this project move forward. Um, and it concerned me when I heard that there was discussion of waiting until the fall to let's well, just come on. Let's make it happen. Yeah, it's, My understanding is that substantial completion will be by the end of June, right? Right. Fred? right. And and uh, I think the delay was was a desire of maybe other folks not having spaces set up that that may be looking to move into the building, but we can talk about that for I think moving into the building is a different issue than, yeah. than people seeing that this project is done and giving ourselves an attaboy and, 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 and saying, all right, now it's up to the individual tenants and we have a lot to discuss about, about requirements oh, yeah. for the tenants. Well, then maybe we have new, new, we have like two events. Maybe one is a ribbon cutting and, and celebration of the opening and the other is like the grand opening with Right. Extra special stars and butterflies. Uh, you know that. I mean, well, the, the, so let me just say that. Yeah. I, I guess the, the building committee is, is hasn't really decided, but I think there's an uh, inclination to do it with uh, with the fall festival to have mm -hmm. it at the building, and supposedly the historic society will have something set up in their space, and you would get more people. To view the building then because they would also come for the fall festival or vice versa i, I guess uh, i'm not convinced that's the I, I, otherwise you're well th then you're having two events because they will have the fall festival there that's fine then they have the uh, fall festival there uh i mean yeah. or okay it's good we're gonna get 30 people anyway so what's right, well, i know let's just get uh, do it uh, snip the ribbon and go i, I know i mean you guys we <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 if you I, want that, I guess I guess we could. I don't know. How many were at the Stems building on their grand opening? 
I, I missed it. 20? Yeah. yeah. There you go. From three towns. Yeah. Okay. I'm doing Saturday morning on the way to the transfer station. People so I, I just, let's just, you guys. So, but I think uh, there's a more important thing. I mean, I'm, yeah, there'll be two events. That's, I think, it's pretty obvious. But we don't really have a building use policy. We have a draft. Um, we sort of need a timeline for that. I, would, I think we'd want to have that in a closer to final form before a ribbon is cut. Um, but, it, you know, or, or at least in, in conjunction, closely in time right. with, with that. So we need to figure out how we're going to get this building use June. policy. I was hoping for June 13th, but that meeting got a little busy. Oh, yeah, it did, huh? All right, June 20th. Is there, is there something you can give us? To, I mean, or, or what, what, what's the relevant committee to be advising us on this? And are they going to be meeting anytime this month? I sort of feel like there were a lot of people and a lot of committees who yes. worked on this town hall. Maybe the municipal building Maybe committee. Maybe the municipal building committee. Want to take that up, or, or we can just leave it to the select board. I'm sure people will have well. this there was there was a, I guess a, a, a draft or something prepared. Yeah. I, I think it was by the municipal building committee. Uh, oh, a year ago at least maybe. Is that the draft uh, you? No. But uh, and, and I think it was tied to liability issues, other building, and we didn't act on it as a board because there was some concern of or discussion of liability of other town properties and activities. Right. Well, it's, Remember, yes, it's, centered, park in the it's centered around field, so. town functions town as functions. opposed to non-town functions right. whose liability right. is, is covered under. Yeah, you are. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's, it, it's broader. Well, you got a, a kind of a use policy, who can use it, but you also got the, the liability issue of it and, and the, the fees, if you're going to charge a fee. To do that, well, I mean, yes, yeah. but a lot of Others. towns have have these policies. We can, you know, we, yeah. we always do go steal from the best and That's go out right. and look at what everybody else is doing, and see what we have in common. And I mean, it sounds like it's, it's Jan work Jan that's got to get done. Janet has done a lot. Has done a bit Jan of that. And it sounds like there was a draft a year ago from the building committee itself. Um, maybe that's maybe that's something that we can just you know put or, put on the agenda at least for the 28th yeah but maybe um, with homework right. maybe on the 13th we can get a draft of, of some homework or some source like something where we're still yeah still put it on there um, and what, whatever we have for a draft from a year ago uh, whatever we have from like the best practices we can skim from other people is it safe to assume that a Google Docs Concept would be breaking the open meeting laws. Yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. I would just think efficiency. But well, if yeah. you only respond, to Mark, I would say that. If you only respond to one person, we, I think we can yeah. go to Janet, right? Right, but I'm just thinking if we could all mark up the same document, oh, so it, would, it, would, it would save time. Oh, yeah. Simultaneous, but uh, I think that would be breaking up the meeting law. Yeah. Okay. Why don't we just get by by the 13th have a draft document that we can mark up and send to Brian That's and right. Janet and call it a day yeah. and we can work off that. Except Janet's last day. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Or today. Or tomorrow. She's she's got some awesome. Right. Yeah. 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 All right. We'll get it to Brian. Okay. So you're looking just for Brian and Janet to develop something. You're not looking for the building committee because we won't be. I doubt we're going to meet before. No. I I I honestly think because we have we're working off of something already yeah. if the three of us each individually provide Brian our comments I can't yeah. imagine they're gonna be too granular for Brian that it will overwhelm Brian and you'll see what we got at least yeah. and then if we need to kick it to a committee we can do it but let's hope that and then and then we could invite the building committee to come to a meeting and give them the you know, as a public document kind of put up a draft and maybe we can get this done in two meetings that would be wonderful would it be worth having the building inspector review it? Building inspector? Occupancy, et cetera, et cetera, depending on what it is you decide is going to be used for. We should know those numbers so, already. Yeah, I don't yeah, think they do know those numbers. Yeah. yeah, we know that already, yeah. And we know what the parking situation is going to be. Which is? Yeah, Chestnut Plain Road. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, it's, I thought we need to walk with something. <laughs> no. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, 
What was developed in the, the, the draft was not really approved by the building committee. That was one individual's proposal. We never yeah. talked about it in a committee or meeting. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not sure I the building know. committee has the jurisdiction over it. That's no, the, yeah. but, well, yeah. okay. But but we but I think their input should be welcome. Absolutely. On this, and they and they I may there may be things that they had in mind okay. that yeah. that we don't think of um, or aren't covered in other. I, right, I didn't mean to insinuate oh, yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So and without dissing them, but also without like shoving a great big hey, get this done in three weeks on them either, right? Right. Okay. Do we think our use is carte blanche? I don't know what that means. Uh, anything goes. Um, Weddings, uh, whatever. I, honestly, I, I haven't looked at policies, so I, I really couldn't. I, I don't think it take, should take the place of the castaways if that process doesn't. So, yeah, 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 there are some limitations. I don't think there'll be a new dancing entertainment license there anytime soon. Well, no, my only question back then goes back to the building inspector as far as use. That was my point. Is it, is it allowed to have a wedding? Oh, I don't know. Can't, yeah, can't really answer that. Sorry. Right. That's, I wouldn't have, yeah, I wouldn't have imagined that. Thank inspector. you for putting that in my head. Right. Yeah, back to the building inspector. He would be the one to answer that on use of the building. Would he? Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's, he's the final. It's, 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 final Dan, it's really late in your tax okay. rates. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Okay, let's move. Okay, as you know, there's they're still working, and most of the work is outside. Fortunately, the Red Sox already played today. So. On the, and the site work is outside that will hopefully be done uh, in June. I think we're still looking at June completion, so. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, moving on. Uh, bidding results of the 2009 Chevy. The end today. How uh, many I tens of it. thousands did it take? 14 hours left. Okay. Oh. So I added so the timing wrong. 13 hours. Well, 13 hours. June 13th, yeah. June 13th. June will know. June 13th. June is parked on your lawn. Right next to the road. Oh, that's slowing down. Slowing down. Yeah. Okay. Annual town election, okay. June twelfth, ten a.m. to uh, seven p.m. Seven p.m. Ten a.m. Seven p.m. Here, vote. When do they need to get um, absentee ballots requested? I don't know. That is probably passed. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No. The the deadline for registering has probably passed. Absentee ballots. How about we generally have to be in the Monday before the election, Monday so morning by noon. Um, so hours. it's better to do it the week before. Yep. I don't know when they start to be available, though. That's the date that's not always. Sounds like a website so, posting. Yeah. Sounds like we had a post yes. on our website. The, the, uh, Are there any contested uh, runs? I don't think so. But the, the, uh, you can write in. There's always a contested. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think we should. The eligibility My to vote is, the right is, is the time period expired for the eligibility to vote? To register to vote? To register to vote, yeah. Um, I don't know. I will check. It's in the scoop, I think. No, wait a minute. No, I didn't get anything from my, for the scoop, so I don't know. Um, but okay. uh, we'll look at the Town of Waitley website. What else? Collective highway bids? Yep. This is the annual contract that we signed with the FERCOG and Keith buys his highway materials through May 23rd, okay. Through the FERCOG collective bidding. Thank you. And it's quiet without the mm -hmm. wall and those hands up. And then the uh, appointment? Yeah, so the recommendation, there was, there was a, uh, as you recall, Catherine Frill resigned from the Board of Assessors, but she was wanted to be appointed to the position. If okay. there was no interested parties that came forward, we posted it on the website, and um, the Board of Assessors did not receive any interested people. Okay. I would move that we appoint uh, uh, Catherine Frill to right? the vacancy. Uh, second. Wait a minute. Have we, to my knowledge, the Board of Assessors has not received a, a letter of interest from Catherine. Have you received that letter of interest? I've received um, verbal interest. That she's interested in being appointed? Yeah. Okay, because yeah. we were, 
asking her to do that so we could uh, recommend her appointment. But. but we shouldn't be creating barriers to or obstacles to volunteerism, and if she has verbally. No, but there, there's also other. What she had another concern about her. Uh, what I want to, I want to say. Uh, financial interest, I guess. Financial if if, if we want to, I mean, if we want to wait, that's fine. When, when I was talking with Cynthia, it was that. I think you guys are starting to meet monthly. Yes. Or, uh, or I mean, weekly. Yes, next, um, starting June 5th. So she will be part of well, that, part okay. of that meeting. If she's not appointed, she would not be part of that meeting. And, and if she's got to recuse herself on an month. issue, she recuses yeah. herself on an issue. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we all do that. Yeah. Okay, as long as you say you've got, you had verbal yep. interest from her, okay, because we were waiting for something before we had to. Yeah. Okay. Please tell me about updates. Okay. Okay. It is 925. Is your lengthy list of updates? Is that what you're about to pull out? Well, we, we also got an executive session. Oh, um, all we're, uh, we can move on to the uh, We can move on to the executive session. It's really late. Do we have it's to nothing read? pressing. Do we have to read that? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I uh, make a motion to adjourn the meeting. To go into executive session. To go into executive session. To go into executive session, and will we not be returning to the meeting after? Yeah, we should probably just read this here. Yeah. Okay. You have to read what. You have to read what's on there. Yeah. Right. To go into executive session for Mass General Law, Chapter 31A, Section 30A. 30A, 21, Print A, Print 6. To consider sale or purchase of real estate located at 219 Christian Lane, Waitley, Mass. If the chair declares that an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the negotiation position of the public body, public body, the board will not be returning to open session. We'll call vote. Aye. Aye. Aye.